Hey guys, Tic Tac here and welcome back to another video. We could do a lot of news and things about Block Party, Battle Royale, or the latest developer update, but I wanted to get this video out to you as fast as I can. Now I know there are a lot of new players that Battle Royale has brought into the mix, and that means there are a lot of new players in the lower levels and zones that still have a lot of questions about the most efficient way the game is played. So that's what we're going to talk about today, the meta. First of all, why? Well, since Fortnite is 99.9% .9 grinding, and then another 15% of grinding materials, leading to an outrageous 114% game about farming and grinding, a lot of people like to do this in the most efficient way possible, besides bashing their head against the keyboard. Asking why every mission in this game is 20 minutes or more. Sorry, sorry, I'm losing track, let's get back to the meta of this game. Once you get into Twine Peaks, things change dramatically. No matter how much health you have or how much fortitude, and let's be honest, everyone just stacks offense anyway, you basically get one shot by everything in the game. Standing out in the open, boom, laser guy insta-kills you. Standing inside your defenses, bam, takers. Too comfortable killing something easily, bam, crusher rips through your entire manhood leading to 198,000 mini husks exploding into your helpless base. This is fun, right? Right? But if you enjoy your time farming, and crying, but mostly farming, there is definitely a meta being evolved in the end of this game. And to be honest, it's not very exciting. But we will go over that. So you can grind out your missions and get your rain and survivor XP, and hopefully not end up crying in a corner because your power went out three minutes left in a four and a half hour event. First things first, layers. Lots and lots of layers. Unless you're in a super high scaling group on an easier mission, you are never going to be able to kill everything fast enough so they will not reach the objective. Traps are helpful, and we'll get to that, but it's not the kind of traps you would think of. This weird thing happened where in mid-game traps became really useful, but once you hit level 100 missions, they really don't do much at all. What does do a lot is making it a pain in the ass for any mob to actually make it to the objective. That works, but not all the time either. But it's better than saying, hey, I got traps on the south side, we don't need to focus on that. You want layers like an onion has layers. So many layers that it makes your soul hurt just farming more materials to make more layers. And after that, you want more layers. Drop some random wood walls wherever you are and use them too. Anything that puts space between you and the objective. So meta tip number one, build f***ing layers. Traps. The thing I told you to level up about a month ago, well, they're a lot more useless now than they ever have been. They don't do anything, really, not enough damage, too long of reload times, and they almost always get destroyed instantly. But some traps do work. Uh, the traps you want to look for or level up if you have them are these four. Floor launchers, wooden floor spikes, dynamos, and especially wall launchers. Why is this, you ask? They do no damage, you ask? Yeah, that's what sucks. The traps are just way too ineffective at killing basically anything. Ever. If you watch my trap video, you'll know that the damage of most traps is 25-50% to 50 of the actual numbers they show, and the long reload speeds don't equate to enough damage. You may do some damage, but sooner or later exploders will show up and make your traps their bitch. Wooden floor spikes are good because they are cheap, relatively speaking, and provide a slow that once again makes it harder for the husks to get to the objective. The more obstacles in their way, the longer it takes for them to get to you, the better. Uh, people are also looking into leveling just the basic gray, green, or blue floor traps uh, because they cost less materials, which in the long run makes farming more efficient. What seems to be happening constantly and consistently in every game is after you build your base, you cover every inch of that thing with wall launchers. And that's just your first layer. Then you build another layer and you put wall launchers all around that as well. And then you build yet another layer and you put wall launchers around that too. It literally becomes the equivalent of a trampoline funhouse for husks. But it's effective. Yes, you can put the occasional damaging trap somewhere, but they will get destroyed no matter where you end up putting them. It's better to knock them back two tiles, which gives you more time to DPS them down. Why, you ask? Because Epic thought it would be fun to just stack thousands upon thousands of health onto every husk in the game and call it scaling difficulty. So meta tip number two, make a bouncy house. If you're just starting out in the game, you'll see a lot of ninjas and outlanders and you'll start to get salty that you're playing soldier and you cannot farm all the good loot from chests. Don't worry, you're on the right course. Soldiers are the best class in the game, by far. They do everything better and faster than anyone else. You can't expect to do melee damage when the entire field is covered with bees, please nerf, and each bee does 16,000 damage, so ninjas are out. 
Outlanders, there are only two that are even somewhat remotely viable. That is Pathfinder Jess or the Deadeye. Jess, for her absurd farming speed, she can get more materials faster than just about every other class in the game. But this only helps your team if she gives them to whoever is building. And let's be honest, they never do. They need them for... I'm not sure, but I'm sure they need them for something. The Deadeye has a few perks to help him farm, but he also has a lot of perks to help him do pistol damage. He can actually do just as much damage as soldiers, but if that's the case, just play a soldier. Constructors. Now, me personally, I like having constructors on the team. Base is really strong and having decreased building cost helps a lot too. But that's it. Every other constructor is terrible, incredibly underpowered, and don't perform well at all. The ones that do work are Base Kyle or Power Base Nox and any iteration of those two. And yeah, that's really it. If you have these characters and like playing Constructor, by all means, do it. They have less building costs and the amount of layers you're going to be needing is hilariously high. Him being able to build cheaper really cuts down on the downtime between missions, farming more materials to do more missions. And lastly, we have the Soldier. This overtuned hero is currently the best and most viable in the game. Why do you need layers or traps if you can just kill everything before it gets to the objective? It may sound absurd, but it's true. A lot of your games will just be four soldiers with so many bullets spraying, it's like a bad case of diarrhea, just spraying all over the walls, the enemies, your mind. Now we can't get ahead of ourselves. Not all soldiers are created equal. There are only about four or five soldiers that are viable late game. And if you're lucky enough to get one of them, your heart should be doing backflips in your chest because you're always going to be on the top of the charts. Headhunter Ramirez and Special Forces Jonesy. Wait, did I say four? Because I meant two. If you want the best heroes in the game currently, you should play either one of these two. That's it. I'm not going to sit here and rattle off the reasons why. That's another video anyway. Just take my word for it. These are the best characters in the entire game. And if you're lucky enough to get one, well, put it this way. I have spent an obscene amount of money on this game, and I still don't have a legendary headhunter. You do get an epic one for completing a certain quest in like the 64 plus zone. Meta tip number three, play a soldier. The farm game. This should actually be called Farming Simulator 2020. It's what you do for three quarters of the time you actually spend in the game. Either farming materials to survive the onslaught of enemies you're about to face, or you're farming survivor XP and tears of pain to get your power base level higher. You're farming constantly. You need to also know that once you hit Twine Peaks, there are no more survivor or encampments or radar missions. If you want rewards, you're gonna have to work for them. Tic Tac, why don't you just go down to the lower missions and farm like that? Well, you can't. I mean, you can, but on top of the constant grind, and because we were progressing too fast, they have 3,600 time gates on every event in the game. Your skill points, missions, and expeditions are all locked behind time gates. So no matter how good you are or how much you play, the only thing that helps you progress is real f***ing time. I feel like I'm playing Clash of Clans on a mobile device. Now, this works best with a full group, but if you don't have one, just go in and ask. Wait, what do you mean you can't find a group? Really? You can't? Oh, they're all playing Battle Royale. Well, if you're lucky enough to get into a game, ask people to rush the objective. But if you can't find that, just pick easier missions. Find the threshold between rewards slash difficulty and don't do anything that may be too difficult and take an extra 20 or 30 minutes to actually complete. Figure out the threshold of what you're able to do easily and the amount of rewards is acceptable. Last little tip guys, the fastest missions in the game are the ones that you can start right away. Uh, that would be the Atlas, the van, evacuate the shelter, and technically the weather balloon. Uh, that one you can drop, if you guys don't know, you can drop the weather balloon at 7 minutes to hurry it up. Uh, they all take about 20, 18 to 20 minutes to do, uh, but if you run them as fast as you possibly can, uh, you can actually get a decent amount of rewards quickly. Seriously guys, this is what every game you'll play looks like. One constructor, if you're lucky, and three headhunter soldiers. It is the most efficient way to run through missions as fast as humanly possible. And since everything has a time gate on it, that's what you're trying to do. Final meta tip, 
play Farming Simulator. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, even though it is funny and, you know, sarcastic, uh, the tips I gave you are, is actually what's going on late game. So if you're looking to uh, progress and get to the level of Twine Peaks and beyond, uh, this is the best way that me and my group have found to actually farm efficiently and get the things you need fast. If you're interested in buying Fortnite for whatever reason, please use the link that is in the description. It will bring you to Epic's website where you can purchase the game. I am actually part of an affiliate program with Epic Games and if you buy the game from that link, it really helps me out. Battle Royale is going free to play on the 26th of September and stay tuned to the channel to find out all the tips and tricks and insider information about the new PvP mode. Later on, they are bringing back basically a horde mode and of course we will be there to cover that as well. If you're new, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, it really helps me out. And when Battle Royale goes free to play and you're looking for people to play with, come check out the Discord, Tic Tac's Trading Post. It has over 525 members and we will be hosting rooms for the new PvP mode as well. Lastly, I stream every weekday from 12pm to 3pm Eastern Standard Time. If you want to learn more about the game or just come on by, thank you so much for watching and Tic Tac out.